Joining us now here in New York is Perry Ann Boring, founder and CEO of the Chamber of Digital Commerce. It's a trade association representing the digital asset and blockchain industries. Perry Ann, great to have you in the studio. Thanks for joining us. What, what's your um, hope for regulation? I mean, clearly there are going to be multiple agencies involved and it's going to be very complex. How do you see it? Uh, how would you like to see it turn out? So in 2019, the Chamber of Digital Commerce, we called for a national action plan for blockchain. So we have uh, some gaps in the way the federal government has been approaching digital assets. First and foremost, we have a very fragmented approach to regulation with the SEC and the CFTC and at Treasury. You have different approaches from FinCEN and OFAC and IRS. Congress is getting involved. You mentioned the consumer regulators, the FTC, the CFPB. There's a lot of stakeholders. There's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. So U.S. competitiveness has been one of the things that I thought was most promising that came out of that executive order. Yeah. It task the Commerce Department to ensure the U.S. can compete globally. So we need to have a strategy. We need to have a plan. We need to yeah. have a way that all these agencies can coordinate in a formal way so businesses know the rules to the road so they can compete on a global playing field. So if you were making that plan, what would it look like? Well, first, we we need to recognize the critical importance of this technology. As Jim Rickards just stated, he said this is much bigger than what I think most of us can even comprehend. I believe this is the most important technology we will see in our lifetimes. Mark Andreessen has said it's just as important as the Internet itself. So first, we need to recognize. And Jim even said it play. himself, he said it's a, it's a medium like the computer. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, it is. yeah absolutely. It, it, it's, a t it's a technology and it's a tool, and it's going to have wide reaching impacts for the financial sector, but also other industries. And we need to ensure that we have public policies in place that protects consumers, protects the financial system, all those things we all care about, but does not stifle an innovation and further encourages the development of this technology here in the United States. Well, and you at the uh, Chamber of Digital Commerce have pointed out that account accounting standards standards is one of the biggest barriers here. How do you go about fixing that or formulating that? So we have called on the Financial Accounting Standards Board, the FASB, to issue accounting standards for digital assets. It seems like such a simple thing, but without having accounting standards, U.S. public and private businesses do not have the tools to make investments in, in cryptocurrencies and put them on their balance sheets. So the lack of having accounting standards has caused all these companies to treat them as indefinite lived intangible assets, which is incredibly punitive to anyone putting Bitcoin or other digital assets on the balance sheet. So it's a simple fix. The FASB needs to issue accounting standards. They have uh, taken comments from the public last year. They found uh, at the end of last year, the board found that cryptocurrency is the number one priority of their stakeholders. So the process is in place, but they do have to make that decision to go ahead and issue these standards, and we are encouraging them to do so. Kaylee and I were talking before the show about um, an issue that a lot of people raise on Bloomberg television, the fact that China looks like it's more competitive than the U.S. right now in this space because they already have the digital UN. When we talk, though, to Mike McGlone, Bloomberg Intelligence uh, Senior Analyst for Commodities, he says, we have a digital dollar, too, in the form of Tether, uh, and that that makes us just as competitive or maybe more because it's the most traded digital currency. What do you think? Great point. So yeah. we, we don't want to compete with China by trying to out-China the Chinese. <laughs> we don't share the same values. We want to make sure that the rails that will be used to fuel our financial system globally is built with Western values. So I believe the way we win this, this, this race globally is to empower our private sector. There are many U.S. businesses that are regulated here in the United States that have issued digital dollars. And we should be finding ways to partner with them to ensure the U.S. dollar is extended in commerce globally, in cyberspace, and on blockchains. Well, you talked about Western values. Let's talk about Western sanctions, because there is a narrative out there that cryptocurrencies can be used to circumvent that. We heard Christine Lagarde, the ECB president, talking about that very thing today, essentially saying, certainly as we speak, that is what is being done. This is something we've heard from Senator Elizabeth Warren as well. What would you say they are getting right or getting wrong? Well, they're getting it wrong. <laughs> let's just debunk this and let's look at the facts and let's look at the data. So U.S. Treasury Undersecretary Nellie Lang just issued a statement where she said 
the transaction volume is so small that she does not believe that this could be a tool for widespread sanctions evasion. Cryptocurrency. But shouldn't it be someday? Isn't that kind of the point? We should is, be able to evade government censorship with Bitcoin. It's a libertarian currency. There are laws, there are governments, they do exist, and they have the tools to track and trace all transactions happening on open blockchains like Bitcoin. This is not a good tool for bad actors because law enforcement knows how to track and trace the money much more effectively than other forms of money like fiat or others. So uh, we're not seeing any real transaction volume to evade sanctions. Uh, the top law enforcement agencies, even at the White House, within uh, FinCEN, uh, and at the FBI have all made statements in the past couple of weeks saying they see crypto as a poor tool for sanctions evasion. And in the black markets where that could potentially be happening, there's not enough transaction volume happening in those markets mm. to do anything on a wide scale. I wonder with which currency people evade sanctions the most. I'll let you guess. The U.S. dollar. <laughs> Perry Ann Boring, thanks so much for joining us. Great having you in the thanks studio. So much, uh, she is the founder and CEO of the Chamber of Digital Commerce.